Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Tonight we are going to do a ranked family portrait on a house that many people love and think it's probably one of the best niche houses out there or traditionally um, many fragrance lovers would put this house towards the very top as far as niche houses go. Although lately they put out some stuff that is uh, suspect, let's say, and that's the house of Frederick Mall. Now, there's a very interesting story behind Frederick Mall. Uh, it's almost like he was born to be in the fragrance world. He was born, actually he was born in to be in the fragrance world because he was born in the fragrance business. Um, and he still kind of lives and works in it today because he was born in 1962 as the grandson of Dior founder Serge Heffler. How's that for a family to be born into? And um, he became a perfumer and a consultant working with many different major houses. Uh, and uh, he created and founded his own brand, Additions de Parfum Frederick Mall. Uh, and he is now basically like a uh, creative director for that house. Uh, a publisher is what he calls himself. He publishes his sense and um, understands the company kind of as a publishing house, Additions. Uh, so for the development of a fragrance, the greatest current perfumers are invited to create a masterpiece at Editions de Parfums Frederick Mall, which is then offered in simple uniform bottle with a noble purist marketing, a kind of auteur cinema of perfumery. The only requirement on the part of Frederick Mall, all flourishes, all accessories, everything superfluous must be omitted. The goal is absolutely consistent, uncompromising composition on the track of a desired impression or a central note. The best possible conditions are created for this. The, the, perfume, the perfumers have plenty of time, no pressure, and a virtually unlimited choice of ingredients. Frederick Mall's goal is to give them the greatest possible freedom. So far, the following famous noses have accepted the invitation. Pierre Bourdon, Jean-Claude Elena, Edward Fleischer, Olivier Jacobetti, Dominique Ropion, Maurice Roussel, Edmund Rudetska, um, Michael Michelle Rudnitska and Ralph Schwiga. The company, uh, the fragrances are often considered radical in the sense of coming from the root or going to the root and enjoy great popularity among the connoisseur audience addressed by this concept. Okay, so there you have it. Um, now their newest fragrance, interestingly enough, Uncut Gem, which I have not smelled, although I would love to, I have not smelled it, um, is the exact opposite. It is derided and uh, many of the fragrance connoisseurs hate uh, their newest release, Uncut Gem. They think it's boring, they think it's mass appealing, they think it's just trying to get sales, and they think it's uh, kind of derivative and uh, unnecessary. Uh, and, you know, that's kind of exactly with the opposite of what the house used to stand for. So maybe the house just needs a seller. And that's what it ended up coming up with. I can't speak yet because I haven't smelled it. Although, judging by the um, reaction of many people I trust, my guess is that I would probably agree with them. But before uh, we do this top 15, this is going to be a top 15 Frederick Mall countdown. We're going to do an unboxing of a Frederick Mall. So I figured, what a perfect way to do this. And I'm going to do an early impression on this too. Um, before I pull this out though, we are going to do scent of the day. My scent of the day is a fragrance that I really like, although um, my good friend Rich Bitch asked me, what do I think about the performance on this? And I said, I think it's fine. I, I don't think there's any from this house that suffer from performance issues. And maybe I'm rethinking that a little bit today. I did wear it as my scent of the day, but uh, one thing I will say is that it's been, so it's uh, December 7th today, and um, it was, over 70 degrees. A couple days ago, it was 70. It was almost 80 degrees here in North Texas. Um, and so the sinus issues that people are having are kind of still flaring up because it's not cold enough to, you know, um, kind of tamper down that pollen and all the crazy stuff that's still in the air. So it's crazy to think we have sinus, you know, um, almost like a spring issue in the middle of December in Texas, but that's what it feels like. It feels like there's a lot of people that have stopped up sinuses and stuff like that, stuffy noses. And so, um, maybe it, I was just having a hard time picking this up, but it really did feel like it was wearing light and it's uh, queer Ottoman by the house of Parfum d'Empire. And I really like this fragrance. I've said 
that this would be a good replacement for someone that didn't want to spend the big money on Roja's Great Britain. And I take that back. I don't think that's necessarily true anymore because this even though it does have that leather iris combination that I love and that does remi will initially remind you of something like Great Britain, it goes in a completely different direction. It also has labdanum, which Roja loves using, uh, but it almost feels like it dries down to this like warm benzoiny uh, vanilla tonka thing that um, really came out on me today for some reason. Uh, especially in the late dry down and I, I had to reapply this pretty regularly. I think I reapplied every four or five hours. Uh, so I reapplied this multiple times today and I enjoyed it, but I started to think, you know what? I think Rich is right. I think it is maybe a little light on performance. I'm very curious since this is a new bottle and he asked me, he said, should I go for vintage bottles of Parfum de Pierre? And I said, no, this is a brand you do not have to hunt vintages for. Just go get the modern. He was like, that's an outrageous statement. Now I'm second guessing my statement. Um, I'm thinking, I wonder if an older Eau de Parfum concentration of this would have been better. This is an X-ray. Um, and even though it is an X-ray concentration, it wears like an X-ray. It wears, it wears very close. I'm sorry. I lied. This is an Eau de Parfum concentration. Um, many of their other fragrances are X-rays. This is an Eau de Parfum. But I'm curious what the vintage bottles, the older bottles, um, perform like. Maybe they were a little bit stronger. I, I don't know um, because I've never smelled them. So um, I enjoyed it. I think it's a good fragrance. I still think it's a good, you know, value for money leather fragrance you can check out. But it's not my favorite leather. Um, I have other leathers that you all know I love that I would much rather wear. Okay, let's let's pop up in this Frederick Mall. And by the way, I have to give a shout out to Mudasir. Uh, Mudasir is, of course, one of my most trusted fragrance um, go-to gentlemen that I go to when I need something. He's on base notes. You can look him up. Mudasir, M-U-D-A-S-S-I-R. And... Um, Mudasir has been doing this for, I swear it feels like 25 or 30 years um, from what I know of him. And he is very trustworthy. Everything always comes uh, exactly like you would expect it to. There are no, um, there are never any issues with him. It's, uh, he's someone that I really trust and I've referred a ton of people to him. And every time I refer someone to him, uh, I do it with the utmost confidence that I know, <clears throat> excuse me, that person will be taken care of. And Mudasir also has some very rare stuff. I think he told me once he has like 1,500 bottles or something. He has a ton of, um, he, he has a ton of uh, fragrances in his collection that are his personal collection that he also sells. So check him out on Base Notes, Mudasir. But he got this from me. This is uh, Noir A Pieces. And this is by the, the son of the great Edmund Rudnitska, Michel Rudnitska. And look at this photo. How about that? Does he look like a, a Al Pacino character a decade after Scarface or what? I absolutely love that look. Look at that. Look at that guy. I love it. Um, so, noir pieces. I've never smelled this before. All I know is that many people I trust speak very highly of it, and I can't really put this in the top 15 ranking because I have no clue what the hell it smells like. I mean, I know what it's kind of supposed to smell like, but um, there, there you have it. Noir pieces. And let's, uh, let's give this the old... Snifferoo, shall we? Um, let me let me hit my wrist here. Man, I love these Frederick Mall sprayers. They are just amazing. One of the best sprayers in the game, the Frederick Mall sprayer. I'll tell you that. Um, so some people compare this to one of my favorite fragrances of all time, Opium by YSL. Um, I can tell you off of first sniff, it does not smell like opium. Right off of first sniff. Maybe it will start to dry down to that. 
Um, there's definitely a big geranium note in the in the opening. And spice, and definitely that clove really comes through. Um, I, uh, maybe this smells closer to the current version of opium, which I've, uh, I've never smelled because I have the vintage, but I don't think this smells like the, um, this is much heavier on the geranium from the get-go, I can tell you that. Geranium is like the number one note that I'm getting right now with spices, um, clove and pepper and stuff like that. Lots of nutmeg. Actually, I might even say geranium and nutmeg are kind of like the two leading notes right now with a bit of that orange peel kind of hanging out in the background. Um, it's good. I like it. It's not exactly what I expected. I'm very curious to see how it dries down. Um, I think it's supposed to have this spicy, woody-like dry down with patchouli and woods, um, sandalwood and cedarwood. So, uh, I'm excited. I'm excited about having this in the arsenal. Uh, this is good stuff. This is um, this is the kind of thing that I want to add to the collection. And I got a great price. I mean, you know, um, I think he had a Harrods discount or something. And when you factor the two together, uh, it, it came out to not much over a couple hundred a uh, couple hundred bucks for a hundred mil. So I'm very happy with that with that price. And um, happy to add this to the Frederick Mall collection. The War pieces. Would I have loved to find a vintage bottle? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what the year... I don't know how to tell these Frederick Malls, but it's AC0. Does anyone know, like, could... Uh, I'm sure someone will know how to... How to... Um, how to rate what year these Frederick Malls are. I, I just don't know. Um, my guess is maybe that zero is like for 2020 maybe this is a bottle from a couple years ago that sat on the shelf at harrods um but honestly i'm not worried about reformulation with frederick mall you know frederick mall i mean i would love to have older malls but i find that they are so impossible to find you have to get extremely lucky to find old frederick malls so i just kind of um i go with what's out there i'm happy with this this is a good buy for me so I'm liking what it's turning into. The first blast with that big geranium could be a little tough for some people. Um, I could see how this might uh, not be the biggest seller. Um, and I'll just tell you a little bit about Michelle Rudnitska. It says, some fragrances uh, revel in their ambiguity. Noir Pieces is an oriental which spares the vanilla and instead is drowning in spicy notes that suggest exotic and disconcerting journeys. Long on nutmeg, cinnamon, cloves, and pepper, Michelle Rudnitska's scent is topped with orange and geranium and backed by precious woods, including sandalwood and patchouli, a woody oriental, a near Shepra. Its sensuality is elegant, never lascivious. Michelle grew up as an insider in the perfume world, initiated by his father, the legendary perfumer Edmund Rudnitska, into the art of composing fragrances, he later changed directions and worked as a photographer and video director. Since 1997, he's headed the creative workshop Art and Perfumes, where he composes fragrances which adhere to strict aesthetic principles and are inspired by his numerous voyages. Good stuff. Um, I like this, and I think this was one of the very first Frederick Mall releases in the year 2000. So imagine that, an oriental with no vanilla and heavy on the spices. I love that description. I think that's perfect for this. Um, I was almost expecting there to be this vanilla-like um, feel to the fragrance because it is described almost like an oriental by some people. And it's not there. It is completely missing. And that lack of vanilla is probably one of the most apparent factors of this fragrance. It's extremely apparent that the vanilla is missing. Like, you expect it to almost be there, and it's not. And that makes it very interesting. Um, the spices remind me a little bit of Cacherelle Pour Lhomme. Um, it, it has a little bit of that feel to it from the spiciness, but not from for the rest of the perfume. I think this is much better than Cacherelle Pour Lhomme, to be honest with you. Um, so, good stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Mudasir. Thank you for that, my friend. I really do appreciate it. 
Um, so let's uh, let's do this top 15. I'm going to uh, just rate these based on how I feel today. Ask me tomorrow, and it could be totally different. And, you know, just because one is number 15 and one is number one does not make number one better. Like I always say, this is just my personal preference on, on you know, my favorites to wear, if you will. Uh, I really struggled with a couple of these. I switched them. I switched them back. I then switched them back. I switched them back again. And I just finally had to just throw up my hands and say, this is where I think they have to go because there has to be a, a ranking in a top 15 countdown. So um, one honorable mention that I will mention outside of Noir Pieces is Dante Bra. There's a video on Dante Bra by uh, Maurice Roussel on my channel. I only had a very small decant thanks to... I can't remember. Someone sent me a decant of Dante Bra, one of my fine uh, perfume god people, and it was it was just enough for me to you know give it a wear um, and talk about it on the channel. And I think I just threw the you know little one ml or two ml decant out when it was empty, so I don't have it to show you. But there is a video of Dante Bra on the channel you can check out from 2008, and that really has that Maurice Roussel. Um, DNA about it, you know, when you smell it, those white musks and his style really come through. I don't think I would buy a bottle of it, but I'm glad I got to experience it. Okay, so top 15. Number 15 on the list is going to be Un Fleur de Cassis. And this is a decant from Moudicier, actually. You'll see a lot of Moudicier decants on this list. Um, Un Fleur de Cassis is a 2000 release, and it's... it it. Uh, so it was part of the ori original Frederick Mall lineup, if you will. And it was created by Dominique Ropion. And it's basically described by many as this animalic floral. And I would agree. There's a beautiful cassis note in here uh, with cumin, aldehydes, apricot, rose, uh, violet, carnation, mimosa, jasmine. It's very floral. It's a little bit pissy and animalic. Um, it does... Uh, somebody in the comments the other day mentioned that it smells a bit like high class, like um, maybe vintage hand lotion in the in the dry down. And I completely agree. I know exactly what they mean by that. Um, it's still a good fragrance. I'm glad I have this decant. I'm glad I can talk about it on the channel. I have not done a full review on this yet. So 10 mLs is more than enough juice for me to wear it, get to know it. But honestly, that hand lotion like vibe does kind of put me off. Even though I really like animalic floral fragrances, I think the ones from the 80s do it better. I'd rather wear, you know, Tenere by Paco Rabanne or something in that in that um, ballpark if I'm going to go animalic floral. So, Un Flor de Cassie, nice, but not my favorite. So, that's why it comes in at number 15. Number 14, and uh, this is a fragrance where I really struggled with where to put it. I also had it slightly higher, and then I ended up moving it back because I haven't done a video on it yet. Um, and if you are a tuberose lover, this could be your favorite fragrance of all time. The problem is I'm not a tuberose lover. But uh, I can see the beauty in this fragrance, and this is a huge perfume. I mean, this is like a ballroom, like a ball gown perfume. Like if you're going to... Uh, the most important ball of your life and you're dressed the best you're ever going to be dressed in your life This could be the fragrance that you wear. I mean, it is that kind of fragrance. Um, it's just Tuberose is a very tough note for me to um, wear this white floral green um, And but I do really like the fact that they paired it with eucalyptus and there's this aldehydic opening. So it feels like an aldehydic floral, like you're used to smelling from the good old days of big aldehydic florals, but it does its own thing. And um, there is this, um, this beautiful interplay between the eucalyptus and the tuberose. And I think it is one of the most beautiful pairings with tuberose I think I've ever smelled. Dior's Poison, I prefer, is the only thing. Um, I, I like the way that Poison has that honeyed, uh, plum thing going on. Still a little bit animalic and indolic. Um, so I like this. I like Cardinal Flower. And this decant is thanks to Rachel. Thank you, Rachel. Um, I will hopefully do a early impression. I don't think I'll have the, uh, cojones to wear this as my scent of the day. 
but I will wear it to bed one day and do an early impression video on Carnal Flower. It deserves it. Um, it, it really is a good tuberose fragrance. It's just not for me, if that makes sense. I can appreciate the beauty of it, though. Number 14 is Carnal Flower. Number 13 is a fragrance. I actually have a video up on the channel. came out in 2003, and it's a Jean-Claude Elena, and it was inspired by um, Apre Londe, one of the most beautiful old-school Guerlains you'll ever smell. Uh, that interplay between anisic, aldehydic, you know, almond, like vanillic, like, um, you know, heliotrope and, uh, heliotropin and oris is what prompted him to create this. And this is called Lodivea. And this is again, sent to me by one of my perfume God people would not be able to smell this without you. Thank you very much. You know who you are. And I really did like Lo de Vera. Lo de Vera is one of those fragrances that um, I would almost like to own a bottle just because it almost feels like it is giving a beautiful salute to a piece of history, which I would really, uh, which I love. I love old Guerlains. The thing is, I would almost rather own like a vintage parfum version of Apre Londe, but they're just so expensive and hard to find. And it, when they do come up, you know, are they from a hundred years ago where the fragrance is turned? I want fragrance that I can still wear. I don't want something that's just like a museum piece. You know what I mean? And so that makes me think Lo de Ver may be the better buy than Apre Londe. Um, and it's a beautiful fragrance. I really enjoyed wearing it. Um, it I really like the uh, interplay between the heliotrope and iris and honey. So beautiful. Such a... Um, such a artistic scent and you have to give Jean-Claude Elena kind of a, a shout out for what he's done here. Um, the, you know, the thing about Jean-Claude Elena's perfumes is they've really grown on me as you'll see, uh, as we get higher up on the list, he has one that's pretty high up on the list here. <clears throat> and at first he was a perfumer that I thought I didn't like. And now that I've got to know more and more of his work, um, it's grown on me more and more and more. And so um, Jean-Claude Elena's Lo de Vea comes in at number 13. Number 12 is actually a fragrance that I'm about to do a video on very soon, I hope. Uh, I only have a couple precious drops of this juice, as you can see. I don't own a bottle of this, but if you're a green fragrance lover, this could be kind of a holy grail fragrance for you. It only came out a year ago, 2021. Seems like it came out forever ago. Um, and it's called Synthetic Jungle. And again, very kindly sent to me by one of you. Thank you very much. Again, Juice, I would not be able to sniff if not for your kindness. So Synthetic Jungle has one of the most beautiful basil notes I've ever smelled, ever. Um, the basil green galbanum combo here with patchouli in the base really is stunning. And the, the greenness feels like they've captured the inside of you know, um, like you're, like you're literally smelling the inside of a stem before it's kind of been cut open is what it feels like. It feels like everything is encapsulated. You're smelling the inside of that stem. Um, it's so green. It's so, uh, it's so rich in green and, and, uh, deep green colors is kind of what I see when I wear this. And, um, uh, the galbanum in here is beautiful. There is that floral bit, and it's the Lily of the Valley and the Jasmine combo that would probably stop me from buying a bottle. Um, jasmine can sometimes be a hard note. That white floral note can be a hard note um, for, you know, people who like vintage masculines normally. Like, that's my favorite uh, fragrance DNA to wear. You know, it would be hard to wear something that is so heavily focused on the jasmine and lily of the valley. Um, but it is a beautiful note. And, and Filippo uh, did a great job here. And, um, you know, it doesn't get the recognition that it deserves. Um, you know, her some of her other creations, uh, she did Lenoit de Lome. Or she was one of the perfumers to do Lenoit de Lome. She also did Lome by YSL. So she's had some bigger hits um she's had some more uh you know you could say more mainstream hits so to see her do a perfume like this i i really enjoyed it good to see her kind of really shine 
Um, and then we've got number 11, and this one many people may agree or disagree on. I think probably on many other people's lists this would be much higher, but for me, um, <clears throat> at least it hasn't clicked with me yet. Maybe it'll click this summer. This is definitely a summer fragrance to wear. Uh, I, I appreciate it. I like it. I just don't love it. It's number 11, and it's uh, Geranium Pour Monsieur by Dominique Ropion. So, Geranium Pour Monsieur uh, has a mint note in the opening that many people make a big fuss over. This kind of fresh, uh, green, spicy, minty thing with low... This, this thing, to me, has loads of synthetics. Uh, this is like one of the synthetic king fragrances. Uh, and yet, it still comes off as very fresh and wearable, uh, but it has that ambroxan throw. I mean, it really feels like when you're wearing it, you're uh, just projecting. And in the heat, I mean, it really feels like it, it projects. Um, there is some green touches, of course, because of the mint and peppermint. Um, and it, it wears very fresh, very, um, uh, you know, it feels almost refreshing in the heat. Like you put it on and, it, and it's like cooling you down. You know, it has that kind of, uh, profile. Um, the base has a little bit of frankincense in it, which I like. Uh, when I get that little hit of frankincense in the base, it really kind of, um, is a good dichotomy to the rest of the fragrance and a beautiful sandalwood in the dry down. Uh, so I, I'm a fan. I like it. I just don't love it. It has not turned into a love yet. Every time I wear this, honestly, I'm like, man, I should have just worn Roadster or something like that. Like I like wearing Roadster much more than, than Geranium Pour Monsieur for some reason. Um, but that is a definite warm weather summer scent. So being in Texas, that will get a lot of use. I'll, I'll probably use that whole bottle. And then, probably if you said, Ramsey, uh, I'm going to give you a chance to buy a full bottle. Uh, it would be this or one of the other ones from this, um, you know, from this uh, uh, line, this Desert Gems line. And so this is coming in at number 10. And this is a uh, Carlos Benaim creation, and this is called Dawn. Mudasir wrote the Dawn, but it's actually just Dawn. Um, so Dawn is, uh, and by the way, this um, Desert Gems line, Frederick Mall has come out and said they use real oud. So these are very expensive fragrances. You regularly will see these between 500 and 1,000 bucks, depending on whether you're buying 50 or 100 mil bottles. And for one of the other ones that's coming up very soon, you'll regularly see it between one and 2,000. Very expensive perfumes. Um, Dawn uses Turkish rose and pink pepper with Turkish rose absolute and frankincense with oak moss, vetiver, labdanum, and oud. And the thing about this fragrance, and I have talked about it I on the channel. I have never made a video on it, but I think when I wore it as my scent of the day, uh, one day I just kind of talked a little bit about it. And, excuse me, the oud takes a back seat, okay? In my opinion. So if you're an oud lover, and you're buying this for the real oud, you will be disappointed. Do not buy this for the oud. Buy it for the frankincense. Buy it for the incense. Now, can you spend $600 on an incense fragrance and be happy? Ooh, that's a tough call, right? Um, because it really feels like the labdanum, the beautiful rose, and the frankincense are the stars of the show. And I have no problem with that. But $600 or $650 or $700 or whatever it is um, for Dawn, mm, that's a real tough call for me. Uh, as much as I would love a bottle. I love how smoky and resinous the frankincense turns in this. Um, and it really feels like the frankincense is beautifully highlighted. This is one of the best new incense fragrances I've smelled. Um, and I do think it's full bottle worthy. It's just when you take price into the equation, it's very hard to give Frederick Mall 600 bucks for this. It's, it really is. Um, the Oud kind of feels like it's a backbone of the scent. It never really presents itself to my nose. Like it never flourishes, you know? It just kind of, it, it, it works as the spine of the fragrance, which is fine. Oud works perfectly in that role because it's such a long lasting 
uh, ingredient. But when you're paying this kind of money, um, you know, this is like double an Arige La Dore. Uh, and you can go buy an Arige La Dore and get the best ouds in the world, in my opinion. Um, and I know some people would say, no, you have to go spend thousands on Ensar Oud. Or, but I think you you get some of the best ouds in the world with a Rizla Dore for half the price of this. So I have a problem with the price more so than the fragrance. You know, I think the fragrance is full bottle worthy. If I could ever find a partial, right, or something like that, I think I would go for it. Um, if I could find like maybe a bottle with 10, 20, 30 mils left, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay full retail. So Dawn is number, what was that? Number 10, number nine. Excuse me whilst I hydrate. Number nine. Um, so number nine is also going to shock some people. This could be number one on anyone's list. <laughs> um, but this fragrance suffered from something that was completely out of its control. Well, part of it is is uh, because this DNA is so popular. Um but the other part is there's a fragrance that came out this year that for me just epitomized this DNA and, and there's nothing I can do about it. I mean, uh, I can't help but compare that fragrance to this, to this DNA and that probably knocked it down a couple notches, okay? Because when I first got this decant a couple years ago, I thought this is full bottle worthy for sure. And you can see I've probably worn four of my 10 mils maybe, three or four mils of my 10 mils. Um, and this is called Portrait of a Lady. Frederick Mall's Portrait of a Lady. And um, Portrait of a Lady, uh, everyone knows Portrait of a Lady. Uh, it's, it's this, um, you know, this beautiful rose patchouli with uh, a very prominent clove note and a fruity black currant and raspberry and to be to be fair it's a beautiful fragrance it probably deserves a full bottle even with what i'm about to say but uh les Epstraits la derlaire excuse took this rose patchouli dna and did something that speaks more to my personal style and that's castorium they added the most perfect castorium note i've smelled uh, you know, there's only a couple fragrances that have a castorium note done so well. You know, you could name things like uh, Van Cleef and Arpels uh, Poron from 78. You could name things like Kinski by Kinski. That's one of the most amazing castorium. And of course, Antaeus. I mean, the king castorium fragrance. So I just much, if I'm going to wear this DNA, and I already spent the money on a full bottle of La Dolea Exquise. I'd rather just wear that, honestly, and, I, and not bother with a full bottle of Portrait of a Lady. Because at this point in time, in 2022, if I bought a bottle of Portrait of a Lady, I would be disappointed every time I wore it. Because I would be w wishing I was wearing La Dolea Exquise, if that makes sense. Um, and so, that's, that's, my, that's the honest-to-God truth. Uh, has nothing to do with the fact that I know Eugene. Uh, I would never risk my reputation on something like that. Anyways, I get nothing for it. And I bought that bottle with my own money. He sent me this, by the way. When I bought it, he sent me this. Um, <clears throat> so, he packed my order. I, I purchased it. He didn't send me a bottle for free. Um, so I can say whatever the hell I want about it. I mean, I could say whatever I want anyways, based on the little decant he sent me, but the fact that I purchased a bottle with my own money really gives me the right to say whatever I want about it. Beautiful postcard, by the way, uh, of La Dule Excuse, but that's why Portrait of a Lady comes in at number nine for me. Uh, if we're talking 2010, if we, if we go back 12 years in time and this first came out and I smelled this at a Frederick Ball counter, I probably would have bought it, you know? Um, it just, it, 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 it's just kind of timing, just like m much in life is all about timing. Uh, Portrait of a Lady for me is about timing and so I think I'm just going to stick with that decant and uh, before it's gone, do a review on the channel and call it a day. Um, Okay, 
Now, here's one <clears throat> where, again, it uh, suffers from another fragrance in my collection. And uh, I would love a full bottle of this. I think it's full bottle worthy. But, um, but I don't think I would probably go for a full bottle right now. Um, because I have so much, uh, juice. I have so much juice from, um, from this other fragrance, which I'll talk about in just a second. And so the fragrance that we're referring to here is French Lover. French Lover comes in at number eight for me. Um... And again, it suffers from a very similar fate as Portrait of a Lady for me. So, uh, French Lover, and you can see I have enough to maybe give it one more wear and do a, do a review on the channel before it's gone. Um, <clears throat> but it's a Pierre Bourdon, is what the name says on the bottle. Interestingly enough, uh, Pierre Bourdon, um, Pierre Bourdon... Uh, claims that Jean-Claude Elena actually made French Lover, and when he signed his exclusive deal with Hermes, he couldn't have his name on a Frederick Mall bottle. So Mall said, we need a big name perfumer to really sell this fragrance. Who's it going to be? And of course it was Pierre Bourdon. He put the finishing touches on it, and his name's on the bottle now. Um, but this is uh, a green spicy scent that has um, a very passing similarity to Creed's Royal Oud. Now, to be fair, this came out first, but I discovered Royal Oud first in my journey. I hate that word, but there's no other way to put it. Uh, in, in my fragrance pathway, in my journey, I discovered Royal Oud first. And so uh, I went through a 250 mil flacon of Royal Oud, and loved it so much, I bought the 500 mil flacon. I have a shitload of juice of Royal Oud. It's one of my favorite creeds. Uh, I think it's one of the best creeds. It actually made um, very, it made the very top of my Western Oud list. There is just something about that fragrance that I I just love it. It it I have so much memories with it. So this is where the problem with French Lover comes in. Is every time I wear French Lover, I'm reminded of Royal Oud. When I wear Royal Oud, I'm reminded of French Lover. And the reason is, they have many uh, notes in common, but they have very important notes to the compositions in common. So Angelica and Galbanum are probably the two most unique notes that both fragrances share. And that cedar note. So Vetiver, I'm sorry, um... Well, there is vetiver in here, but galbanum, angelica, and cedar are probably the three that tie the perfume to get perfumes together. And then to tie them together even more, um, uh, Royal Oud was created by a uh, Pierre Bourdon uh, disciple. It was created by Julien Raskinet. <laughs> um, so, I mean, the, the plot thickens. And uh, Royal Oud just, for me, just shares, you know, I, I have so many amazing memories with that. I almost wore that as like a signature scent for years. Uh, I, I love, absolutely love Royal Oud. So that's where French Lover has this problem. But I do think that uh, French Lover has more of this earthy, uh, you know, dry, forced floor-like vibe uh, with wisps of frankincense. Uh, and and Royal Oud really focuses more on the cedar. You're, you're not going to get frankincense in, uh, in Royal Oud, but you will get uh, a, a bigger cedar note. So uh, I think they probably could both fit in a collection. One may not necessarily crowd the other one out, but for me, they're so similar. Again, very similar to um, Portrait of a Lady and La Dolores Esquisse. I wouldn't buy a full bottle of French Lover unless I could find a partial at just an amazing price. So, And and if you ever see it listed as Bois d'Orage, uh, that's how it's sold in the U.S. and Canada. And French Lover is how it's sold in Europe. 
So just FYI. Okay, so French Lover comes in at number eight. Uh, number seven. Number seven is going to be a um, is going to be a perfume that uh, got hyped in the community for a long time. This came out in the year two thousand. It was part of the original Frederick Mall release, if you will, and it was created by uh, Maurice Roussel. And I am lucky enough to have a vintage bottle, so it's very hard to find vintage Frederick Malls for whatever reason. It just uh, they they don't show up very often. They're they're very hard to come across, and um, you can tell them apart normally by the uh, what they call the matte black top uh, cap. So you can see this is what the old Frederick Mall caps used to look like. See how it says additions to parfum in, in a circle and it's kind of matte. The new ones look like this. Additions to parfum, ED, EDP, Frederick Mall, right? And you can see how it's kind of shiny. So that's why they call uh, this the matte black, the, the matte cap version. But you can tell that uh, that's one way to tell that it's an older bottle. Uh, and another way is, is the writing, but you usually don't have to go there. Um, and so Musk Ravageur, is probably one of the most wearable um, musk scents. It was known as an amazing date night scent back in on the early days of Fragcom. Many people hyped up musk ravageur. Um, sometimes you'll see someone say that, oh, this is the most animalic fragrance in my collection. It's so furry and animalic and, and they're full of shit. Or they don't know what they're talking about because uh, even these vintage, even this vintage bottle, I have a decant of the modern too. I should have brought it, but it's uh, it's under lock and key. So um, you know, even the vintage when I compare it to the to the modern, I much prefer the vintage. I think it's much deeper, um, and the scent has more of that you know depth to it. it. It is the best way to describe it. It has a little bit more animalic musk. The new one is more. Um, more focuses on the uh, vanilla. I feel like the vanilla is really amped up in the new one, and it smells more like a Cinnabon. This one still has some Cinnabon pieces to it, but it seems to go more through the progressions. Like you get the lavender, then you get the cinnamon, they, and then the you know, and it kind of goes through this transition cycle. And um, but it still feels extremely wearable. Never, I don't think would anyone really smell this and be like, you know, act. Think you're smelling Musk Tonkin or Musk Kublai Khan or something more challenging like that. Uh, this is a very wearable musk, and that's one of the things I really like about it, especially in the colder weather. This really does shine. It is a beautiful, beautiful scent. Um, so happy to have an older bottle of Musk Ravageur, and that comes in at number um, seven. Number six. Number six is another one like Dawn that I wish I had a full bottle of, but it's just, the price is prohibitively expensive. And so I have a 10 ml decant, and as you can see, I've probably gone through four mils again, three or four mils out of my 10 mils. So uh, I still have some good wares from this perfume. And this is the most expensive fragrance in the Frederick Mall wardrobe. And this just goes to prove that expensive is not always the best, at least not for me. Uh, so this comes in at um, number six, and this is The Night. The writing's kind of rubbing off, but this is The Night. So this is Dominique Ropion's take on Portrait of a Lady with Oud. So imagine Portrait of a Lady with that rose patchouli, but they've added Oud and Saffron with frankincense and sandalwood. And um, it is beautiful. It does have that animalic, challenging oud opening that has this fecal quality to it. Uh, barnyard oud, if you will. You know, uh, fertilizer oud, fertilizer chips. Uh, you know, it, it has some of that bovine uh, quality to it. But I like it. I, you know, it's... <sighs> the, the problem this fragrance has, again, is the price. Um... You're talking fifteen hundred bucks, sixteen hundred bucks for hundred mils or whatever it is of this, and um, when you could pay two, three hundred bucks and buy yourself a 
Bortnikov or an Ariza Dore and get real Oud. Uh, and I think Bortnikov's um, Oud Maximus, whether it's the 18, 19, 20, 20 version, it doesn't matter. I think Oud Maximus competes with this head-to-head -head and it's quarter of the price. Uh, Ariz Ladore has many just out-and-out -out Oud fragrances that compete with this. I would even go so far as to say, even though I don't think it competes with it on quality, um, I was going to grab an Ajmal that I bought recently. I don't know where I put it, though. I bought an Ajmal fragrance um, called uh, Mukhalit Al Shams, I think. And I think I spent like 30 bucks on it. And I get just as much enjoyment wearing that. Now, that's more amber and oud. But, you know, uh, I'm, I'm at the point now where I don't need a $1,800 bottle of oud. I just don't. So, would I love a bottle of this? Yes. Will I give Frederick Mall the money for this? No. No way. Not unless it falls into my lap for super cheap. Um, you know, unless Frederick Mall is going to start sending out free bottles to people like me, I will not have a bottle of that anytime soon in my collection. Uh, number five and number four are the two I went back and forth on over and over and over. even right now I'm thinking, do I want to switch it again? But I'm not. I'm going to leave it. Um, but just know this could be one step higher easily uh, with the simple click and, and switch. This could easily be one step higher. And it almost was. It actually was multiple times and I changed it. But I fell in love with this. I think this is maybe one of the most underrated Frederick Mall fragrances, and as far as like new loves for me, this is number one. This is number one on my new Frederick Mall love. This is the newest Mall. Um, smelling Noir pieces, I can tell you, I think I like this even more than you know. If I put my, if I put uh, my, uh, you know, Mall fragrances that I've most recently fallen in love with this would be number one this would be the newest addition to my collection which i absolutely love i like noir pieces but i don't love it as much as i love this from the second i smelled this i loved it and i don't know what it is about it is the thing it's a jean-claude elena and uh many people had a problem with this when it came out because of the name it was called it's it it is called rose and queer okay and um rose and queer uh, came out in 2019, and it's this floral green fragrance. And I like this a million times better than Synthetic Jungle, to be honest with you. I think this is the floral green to go for, not uh, Synthetic Jungle. For me, anyways. This is one of the few fragrances that I wish I would have went with the 100ml, not the 50. Uh, this, has this, bourbon, this has this bourbon geranium. Speaking of geranium openings... Uh, like in Noir Pieces, this has this geranium opening with uh, fruity black currant and Nepalese Sichuan pepper that is out of this world. There's something so perfectly airy about it. And I've heard it described as, you know, saying that uh, it's rose and queer without any rose and without any queer because there's geranium instead of rose. And geranium sometimes gives off this rosy-like quality this spicy, rosy-like quality. And it's like that here, uh, with vetiver, cedarwood, and leather. And the leather in the base is extremely shy. It's almost like uh, you really have to hunt to pick it up. I think you will pick up the leather, um, but it is a, it's not an animalic 80s, you know, uh, in your face. It's not Bellamy. It's not anything like that. This is completely different. And yet, there is something about it that I think has a stroke of genius. There's a brilliant stroke in this fragrance for some reason, and I'm just drawn to it. Um, I want to wear it. I, I, I just, even in, now that it's cold and I want to wear my heavy fragrances, smelling this makes me want to wear it. It is that good. I think uh, this is one of the most underrated Jean-Claude Elena fragrances. Uh, wish I would have went for the 100 mil, but I got a good price on this, so I can't complain. So, Rose and Quia at number uh, five. Number four is what I think is, again, wish I would have went for 100 mil of this instead of 50, but I'm glad to have it. Carlos Benaim, um, 
one of the most, um, I would say one of the most, one of the most unique interpretations on a fougere I've smelled in a long, long time. This is music for a while. So music for a while barely beat out Rose and Queer. And I mean, it was neck and neck. And I'm still second guessing myself right now, but I'm going to leave it. Uh, music for a while. <laughs> One of the most unique fougere creations. It's definitely a fougere in my mind. It has that DNA. Uh, it has that lavender. Uh, and you're going to get a sweet pineapple note. And that may put some people off. You know, pineapple being the trendy note with Aventus, of course. The pineapple in here is amazing. It almost, I would say, it, it probably beats Aventus just on the pineapple note. It dries down to this uh, patchouli amber vanilla. And while it does have a little bit of sweetness to it, there's this dried, sticky feeling to the pineapple and mandarin orange. <clears throat> the lavender keeps it classy to me. And I think this is extremely unique. And uh, for someone who is interested in a modern fougere, you know, uh, I would I would urge you to, to try music for a while. I I love this stuff. I think I, I'm a huge fan of Carlos Benaim anyways, but think about his think about his uh, arc of his career, you know, to go from Polo Green in 78 to Dunhill Icon in 2015 to something like this in 2018. I mean, what, what a career arc. Um, I love it. Huge fan. All right. So we're in the top three. And these are all going to be 100 mil bottles. And they're all big hitters. These are heavy, heavy. These are some of the heaviest fragrances in my collection. Number, number three uh, is a Bruno Jovanovic. And it came out in 2016. It's actually the first fragrance Frederick Mall released after um, they were purchased by Estee Lauder. And everyone freaked out. They were like, oh no, you know, this is, um, this is, uh, you know, the kind of stuff they're going to put out now. It's completely different than what Frederick Mall usually releases. And, and what made this scent so... Uh, different is there was an unusually high concentration of patchouli in here, like 50% of the concentration is patchouli. And this is Monsieur. And that 50% number is not me making it up. The brand says 50% concentration patchouli in here, like a fractionated patchouli of some sort. Um, Monsieur is... I think a brilliant patchouli, and in the cold, it really does shine. It's patchouli with rum absolute, tangerine, and that tangerine note in here is brilliant because it keeps the fragrance balanced. You really will notice the tangerine in the beginning um, with vanilla, moss, cedar, frankincense, amber, and suede. You will also really notice the frankincense and the suede. So as it dries down, even though the patchouli is the star of the show, the frankincense will come out. You'll notice some of those um, smoky wafts. And this furry, fuzzy, suede-like dry down. It's a beautiful scent. Uh, is it big and bold and powerful? And, um, you know, is it uh, beast mode? And uh, is it overdone? Probably. But I don't care. I love it. I, I, I'm a huge fan of Monsieur, and I'm so glad to have a 100 mil bottle. And interestingly enough, I got this from Moudassir. So there you have it. Moudassir is a big, uh, has had a big effect on my Frederick Mall collection, as you can see. And then, top two. Uh, number two is a Julien Rasquinet. If you know what's coming, you know. Uh, number two is going to be, drum roll please, the moon. Uh, the moon is, what can you say about the moon? It is a fruity, woody, oody, leathery, smoky, uh, beautiful Turkish rose. Uh, and probably the best lychee note I've ever smelled outside of Zonka. Zonka is probably the 
reference lychee note for me. And the lychee note here is, is right there. I mean, it's almost just as good as in Zonka. And this is a big Middle Eastern saffron. It's so huge. This stuff, I mean, you talk about beast mode. You put, if this touches uh, anything, skin, clothes, it's a 12 to 24 hour ordeal. And I'm not just making that up. I mean, you will smell this the next day. If it touches a jacket, it's now your the moon jacket. You can't wear anything else with that jacket. It's huge. Um, many people compare this to a, uh, Rare Fidelis because it's the same perfumer. Uh, Julian Rascone did Rare Fidelis for Histoire de Parfum. It, they say, you know, if you don't want to spend the big money on the moon, get Rare Fidelis. They are completely different, but they have that Julian Rascone DNA about them. So, um... I, I like them both, even though they both uh, use synthetic materials, heavy synthetics. I don't mind. It doesn't bother me. Luckily, I'm glad. I'm glad I don't because I really enjoy this type. This is probably my favorite type of modern perfumery. I love stuff like this. If you like the big bold masculines from the old days, you know the stuff that really made a a, a presence when you walked into a room. This is the kind of modern perfume you should sniff. If you can put up with the amberwood notes. Some people can, some people can't. Um, but if you can, if, if you're blessed like me, where the amberwood notes don't put you off, check out the moon. <laughs> and finally, that leaves number one. And number one is a Dominique Ropion. And it's the cheapest from this line. It is from the Desert Gems line, but it's the cheapest of the Desert Gems. Again, just goes to prove. High dollar cost does not always mean best fragrance. Um, this is Promise. And Promise is a huge fragrance. You talk about huge fragrances. These last three, I, even music for a while is a beast. But um, Promise is this... Um, Cypriol Superstar fragrance. This is one of the best Cypriol fragrances I've ever smelled. Uh, it does have this perfect apple note in the opening. Very hard to do an apple note well, but it's rosemary, pink pepper, apple, Bulgarian rose, Turkish rose, absolute, clove, patchouli, ambroxan, labdanum, Cypriol, and castorium. And I will tell you this, I know I was singing the praises of the castorium in, in some of the earlier fragrances we talked about, like La Dolea Exquise, um, and Kinski by Kinski, and stuff like that, uh, Van Cleef and Arpels Pour Homme. The Castorium in here, for modern Castorium, is very, very good. And there is a point in time where you will notice it as the fragrance dries. It does actually change. And one of my favorite parts of this fragrance, and it could be hour, sometimes I notice it's hour four, Sometimes it's hour five, sometimes hour six, sometimes hour eight, okay? It just depends on how it dries down on your skin that day because it changes. And that's what makes this fragrance so interesting um, is when that castorium comes out. And, and you can tell. I mean, it's noticeable. Man, I need, to wear, I need to wear these big hitters soon. I've been kind of waiting for it to get cold. I need to just say screw it and wear it. It's almost, it's December. And it's, you know, and it's in the 70s in Texas, so... I'm going to miss my opportunity to wear these. I need to wear them. So that's my Frederick Mall top 15 and my unboxing of Noir pieces. Uh, do let me know what you guys think. Uh, let me know what your favorite malls are. Let me know uh, what you think of the ranking or, you know, how you would rank, how you would rank your Frederick Malls. Again, I don't have them all. I know that there is a lot of Frederick Mall fragrances that I'm missing. Um, I don't have, uh, uh, many, many mall fragrances, uh, and and so my list is nowhere near complete at all, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, love seeing your faces in the comments. Thank you for the support. Cheers, guys, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye now.